oppressed as well, who have come to believe what we have been taught about ourselves. And some of us believe that it's a waste of time trying to convince the oppressor to change his ways, that what we have to do is get the power over our lives so that it doesn't matter what the oppressor thinks about us. And we believe, some of us, and I come from this school, believe that if you've got the power, then the oppressor learns to like you. Someone once said that power is the, is the a powerful, the greatest aphrodisiac. <laughs> and so you learn uh, uh, with enough power, people who didn't like you yesterday can come to love you on tomorrow. And so uh, there are some of us who said that the quest that we should be on, the trajectory that we should be on, is for the accumulation of power so that the oppressor can no longer harm us. And the thing that's so important is that it is clear that the world has changed and that those who want to see this change can see it. It's not something that's hiding from them. Uh, unfortunately, too, so much is at stake. Value is at stake. Wealth is at stake. Resources at stake. Uh, and that the oppressor will not easily change his ways. And uh, so, so we are confronted, uh, we believe, with a serious kind of crossroads. We see what is happening in Paris, even as we have this discussion today, uh, where people are not going to live like that anymore. We see it happening in Birmingham, as we have this discussion today. <laughs> it's happening over and over in the United States. Uh, and the fact is that we are in a state of transition. It's not going to be possible to put the genie back in the bottle again. And what we are confronted with is what side of history we stand on and whether all of us are determined to move forward into this new world. Because the most forward thinking, the most positive forces happening in history today are those forces who are working